Hello, my name is Raven Malvino, and I'm from Adelphi University. The title of my project is Starting a Science Blog During a Pandemic. The current COVID-19 pandemic plaguing the world is ever-changing as new information emerges daily. Aside from the impact of the virus on humanity, the environment is subsequently being affected. Climate change and health are directly related. Therefore, the relationship between a long-lasting pandemic like COVID-19 and environmental factors can be observed. My research project examines this relationship as the pandemic continues and eventually, hopefully, slows and concludes. In the future, I hope to pursue a career in science writing, communicating scientific knowledge to the public in a readable, easily understood manner. The COVID-19 pandemic has been discussed in the media, causing conflicting, misunderstood information to circulate throughout society. Throughout my thesis research, I have constructed a blog to discuss the COVID-19 pandemic in correlation to society, addressing subjects like the environmental impact, the effect on extreme weather, and related social issues. We are looking at blogging as a form of communication, while also delving into the science behind COVID-19 and its impact. This time has been and will continue to be frightening and filled with unknowns. My goal is that through research, new information can be delivered to the public and reach an audience that may need clarification during a time of need. So when I began planning my blog, the first step I took was creating a brand and mission. I decided my mission statement would be that I am an aspiring science journalist attempting to solve problems and break them down to spread awareness and educate the public. I decided that this statement would be followed throughout my research and used it to set goals for myself and my blog. Next, I decided to think about some good things that I definitely wanted to incorporate into my blogs, as well as some things I definitely wanted to avoid. Some of the things I decided were good and I wanted to do were write about current issues, ask and answer questions, use visuals like photos and videos, and overall spread a message of, of positivity. Some things I wanted to avoid included biased opinions in my writing, inconsistency, discussing information I am not fully knowledgeable on, and talking about things that are already being discussed. That was a big one when writing about COVID-19 because I didn't want to take what others were already saying and just say it again myself. I wanted to try to discuss topics I wasn't hearing about in the news and media and bring new information to the public. So I decided to look at some other science leaders to take inspiration from and incorporate into my blog. So first I looked at Carl Zimmer. Carl Zimmer is a science journalist who runs a blog and reports about biology. He's a columnist at the New York Times. When looking at his Twitter, he tweets and retweets about five to 10 times a day. He discusses politics on his Twitter account, and he also includes information related to biology and environmental issues. Next, I looked at Bethany Brookshire. She hosts a podcast called Science for the People, posts about once a day on Twitter, posts about things that are happening in the media, which helps her broaden her audience, and also posts about science, science memes, and uses puns. Phil Plate was the next science communicator that I looked at. He runs an astronomy blog, is very humorous in his posts, posts very frequently, and some tweets are him explaining science articles he finds interesting to the public. I took inspiration from that and definitely looked at some articles from journals like Nature and Science to break them down into terms that I would understand and that I thought the public might more easily understand um, and posted those on my blog. Finally, I started my blog on WordPress. The blog is called ravenmalvino.wordpress.com and includes a blog feed with each post that I've written and published. In addition to the blog, I also started a Twitter to promote what I was writing. At first, starting a Twitter was an intimidating and daunting task because I was anxious to reach out to new people to start a conversation to promote myself and risk facing criticism. Ultimately, it was a learning experience and I was able to speak with a few groups on Twitter and some even retweeted my blog posts. Here I've chosen some blog posts I've written to discuss. First, I have a blog post titled The Impact of PPE Use. I was inspired to write this post after visiting several stores and seeing a recurring trend of used masks and gloves being littered around parking lots. I began thinking about how this might impact the environment in the future. Upon doing some research, I discovered that these PPE are actually considered biohazardous waste and the store workers who were cleaning up this litter were being put at risk. I hadn't heard many people discussing this topic and thought it was important to share. The next blog post I want to highlight is titled Living on Campus Post-Pandemic. 
I'm a resident at my university and was thinking about how I would do everyday tasks I did pre-pandemic, like go to the dining hall for lunch or shower in a communal bathroom. This was more of an opinion piece on how I would feel returning to college after experiencing the pandemic for months. Finally, I wrote a three-part series about hurricanes and COVID. I started thinking about the worse than average 2020 hurricane season looming over certain states and how that might impact people. I discussed issues like where do you seek shelter when COVID-19 is a risk. While writing the series, Texas was actually a hit with Hurricane Hannah, which I was able to follow and write about in real time. In conclusion, we determined that blogging is a successful form of science communication. We were able to take a topic, in this case COVID-19, and break down related issues for public knowledge. Blogging specifically allowed us to market our posts towards a certain audience. The blog allowed for a greater variety of content to be produced, and I wasn't confined to writing about certain topics. I could write about topics I was interested in, which I think helped the audience connect more easily to the blog. We also found that keeping a more neutral, sensitive tone throughout each blog post was important. When discussing a heavy topic like COVID-19, I found it especially important to keep others' emotions in mind to not offend anyone. We tried switching up the genre of articles throughout the project and I drafted a spoof article, but it didn't feel right posting it. I learned that defining my voice and staying true to it on the blog was a key aspect for its success. In the months I've been blogging, I posted 25 times, received 429 views, and had 178 visitors. My most viewed post was living on campus post-pandemic on June 25th, 2020. That post received 59 views in June and continued receiving views through September. This post likely received the most views based on who it was being marketed towards. My peers were likely able to relate to the title of this post and clicked and read it to learn more about someone's opinion on a situation they were likely experiencing as well. We also examined my monthly views, which were definitely at their highest during times where I was posting the most consistently and promoting myself the most. For example, in August, I didn't post too much on the blog, so my viewership was lower. We can predict that if I were to work on this blog consistently over a longer period of time, like several years, the viewership would trend upward. Thank you so much. Feel free to reach out with any questions you may have and have a great day.